All right, so this is section 10.4, which is on derivatives, integrals, and products of transforms. So let's first focus on products of transforms. So before we talk about that, let's uh, introduce a new definition. So f star g, this is called the convolution of g, f and g. Convolution is defined this way. So f star g at t is equal to the integral from 0 to t, f of tau times g of t minus tau, d tau. Uh, if you check, this is actually equal to g star f. So convolution doesn't, the order doesn't matter for convolutions. So the first theorem in this section says that if you take the Laplace transform of the convolution of two functions, the outcome is the product of the individual Laplace transforms. So on the left-hand side, this is the convolution. And on the right-hand side, is a regular product. <clears throat> and this is very useful to find inverse Laplace transforms for many functions. So let's uh, do an example. So suppose we want to find the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared minus 1. So first we notice that s squared minus 1 factors into s plus 1 and s minus 1. So this is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 times 1 over s minus 1. <clears throat> and this is easier to understand if we use the diagram here. So in diagram we have two columns, little f, little f of t, and big F of s. The two functions are linked via Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms. So the function we're thinking of is 1 over s plus 1 times 1 over s minus 1. We don't know the inverse Laplace transform of this function, but we know the inverse Laplace transform of the individual factor. So the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 is e to the negative t. And the inverse Laplace transform for 1 over s minus 1 is e to the t. So the theorem that we just introduced, because our function is the product of these two factors, then the inverse Laplace transform is going to be the convolution of these two functions. So it's going to be e to the negative t star e to the t. All right, so let's calculate the convolution. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to t, e to the negative tau, times e to the t minus tau, d tau, d tau. Uh, let's see, so this is 0 to t, e to the t minus 2 tau, d tau. So it's negative 1 half, e to the t minus 2 tau, from tau equal to 0 to tau equal to t. So this is equal to... When tau equal to t, this is equal to e to the negative t. When tau equal to 0, this is equal to e to the t. So this is our final answer. All right, so let's do a more complicated example. So suppose we're going to find the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 1, whole thing squared. And this is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of the product of 1 over s squared plus 1 times s over s squared plus 1. So let's write down the chart again, f of t and big F of s. This way is L, the other way is L inverse. So we don't know the Lap inverse Laplace transform of the product, but we do know the inverse Laplace transform of the individual function. This turns into sine t and the other one turns into cosine t. And because our function is the product of the two factors, then our answer is going to be the convolution of sine t and cosine t. So let's calculate the convolution of these two functions. So this is integral from 0 t sine tau 
times cosine t minus tau, d tau. Here we use the trig identity that sine alpha cosine beta is equal to one half uh, sine alpha plus beta plus sine alpha minus beta. Yep, that sounds right. Yep. Okay, so using the trig identity, so this is equal to 0 to t, 1 half sine of the sum, sum of two angles, which is t plus sine of the first angle minus the second angle. So it's 2 tau minus t, d tau. So this is 1 half integral from 0 to t sine t, d tau plus one half integral from zero t t sine two tau minus t d tau. The first integral has no tau in it, so it's just multiply the whole thing by t. So it's sine t times t. The second integral is minus one half times another one half cosine two tau minus t from zero t. So first term stays there, second term, so when tau equal to t, this is cosine t. When tau equal to zero, it's cosine negative t, but cosine is even, so these cancel each other. So the final answer is one half t sine t. All right, so let's do a last example. Suppose we want to find the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s minus 1 times s squared plus 4. Then this is the product of 1 over s minus 1 times 2 over s squared plus 4. Again, let's draw the chart. We want to find the inverse Laplace transform of the product but we don't know the inverse Laplace transform of that function, but we do know the inverse Laplace transform of the individual function. The first one is just e to the t, and the second one is sine 2t. So same thing, because our function is the product of these two functions, then the answer we're looking for is the convolution of e to the t and sine 2t, which is the integral from 0 to t, e to the tau, times mm, sine 2t minus tau, d tau. We're going to use the u substitution here, so the u equals to t minus tau to make things easier. <clears throat> so. The whole thing is equal to the integral from 0 to t, e to the t minus u, and sine 2u du. Okay, so this part comes out. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to t, with t, e to t pulled out, e to the negative u, sine 2u du. And if you look at the integral table, so integral table, at the end of your textbook, there's one that helps us to evaluate this integral. So it's number 50 at the end of your book, uh, 49. So it says integral of e to the au times sine du is equal to e to the au over a squared plus b squared a times sine bu minus b times cosine bu plus c. So we're going to use that to evaluate our integrals. So it's e to the t, and we want to take this whole thing and evaluate at 0 and t, and take the difference. Notice our a is negative 1, b is 2. Okay, so when u equal to t, we get e to the negative t over 1 squared plus 2 squared is 5 times negative 1 times sine 2t minus 2 cosine 2t. So this is when u equal to t minus 
u equal to zero. So when u equal to zero, the outside is one over five times the first term is zero because sine of zero is zero. The second term is negative two times cosine two uh, t t, which is I mean cosine zero, which is one. So it's like that. So the final answer is the term without a trig function is 2 fifth e to the t, which comes from this term. And the other two terms are minus 1 fifth sine 2 t, and then minus 2 fifth cosine 2 t. So this is our final answer.